Hey, what's going on, everyone? Vega here from Serpent X Tech, and continuing on with our chirp installation. After you complete the registration, you have your unit mounted up. You know, you selected your antenna type, how many meters, so on and so forth, and you're waiting on the verification. Go ahead and go into your account, and you want to go to the Devices tab. When you go to the Devices tab, you want to click on Add Device, and there's a number of supported devices already. Okay, first off, let's read this. Chirp Wireless offers a multi-protocol IoT gateway that supports various connectivity protocols, including LoRay, LoRa, LoRay, I know I say it wrong, 2.4 gigahertz, LoRa WAN, uh, sub gigahertz, cellular technology such as LTE and sort range protocols like BLE or Bluetooth Low Energy, Zigbee, Thread Matter, and Zigbee is a big one in the at-home management space for most of your smart devices. Plug and play, which is very convenient with Chirp, is that the key advantage of Chirp's gateway is plug and play simplicity. With Chirp, starting your IoT automation journey has never been easier. All you need to do is plug in your gateway, which we already have done, and you can immediately start adding devices to the network. There's no complexity, uh, complex setup or configuration required, eliminating the need for extensive technical knowledge or programming skills. Now, I will say that not every device is supported, but I believe the Chirp team is working on adding more and more. Continuing on here, it says Chirp's gateway uh, acts as a central point of control, enabling the management and co uh, coordinating or coordination of IoT devices within the network. It provides the necessary infrastructure for data transmission, security, and device management, ensuring seamless and reliable IoT ecosystem by connecting devices through the gateway. Businesses uh, can centralize monitoring, automate processes, and leverage uh, the power of data-driven insights. This is why... I'm very bullish on this because like, for example, agriculture, right? To, to set up a few of these around my farm, obviously the farm size is depending upon like what your, what your range is going to be, how many units you need, but just thinking about a farm and having these various devices that monitor the weather, monitor the rain, monitor the, the air conditions and provide feedback to my centralized unit or my, whatever I'm using to store this data. That's why they have enterprise commercial and residential solutions i'll be able to monitor my farm in great detail either way the basic point of this video is that those devices can be connected once you're in your gateway again go to that devices tab click on add device and you can see laura wan devices but we're just going to choose this one right here because we actually have a thermostat here right in front of us uh you can't see it right now but we're going to choose the manufacturer we're going to select the model. It just depends. Your, your box should tell you exactly what it is. So select the correct one, which in our case is going to be this model right here. Select the band. We're going to choose our US because we're not in EU. And then we got to put in the device EUI, which should be on the back of your box. Make sure you enter that in. And then app key. Uh, there's a couple steps and you can see my device is not on this list and how they're trying to expand it. But if you mouse over the little eye here, it will tell you, you know, device uh, EUI um, is unique identifier for your end uh, end device. It should be provided by the device manufacturer, typically printed on the device itself or in the packaging. I actually have a QR code that if I scan it, I can type it in. And matter of fact, if I go ahead and start typing it in right now, you'll see it start to pop up. Now, this information is unique to your specific device, so just make sure you fill it out correctly. Right, it's kind of like a, a MAC address or IMEI number, and then your app key. It says here, app key is a LoRa WAN encryption key. It's typically provided by the device manufacturer. Please check the device packaging and official device documentation. Contact the device manufacturer if you cannot find it. I do have a form here in which I'm going to follow or a uh, I get I guess a get started guide to continue. Once I'm done with that, we could go ahead and hit next. On the next screen, you're going to need to put in a device name. This is just for you to know what it is, the location in which you put that device, especially if you have multiple, and you can always add a new location. So you could set kind of like if you were playing around with devices in your smart home, you know, living room, bedroom, whatever, right? You just want to you assign it a unique location so you know which device is where and what it's communicating with. Switching over to my phone, we do need to install the application for whatever our IoT device is. So just make sure you get what you need chirp discord going off there so this one is the i believe is king ping iot so we're installing this app this was on uh the setup manual so to speak where it's a little thermostat i'll probably take a picture and post it somewhere uh it's just one button type c charger and then i could stick it to a wall anywhere but once we have this iot device or application installed from this manufacturer we need to connect it now to our 
chirp wireless gateway. All right, I'm not going to take you all the way through this process or give you every single detail. It's just like syncing up any other device, but we have uh, our device in front of us. We just engage Bluetooth by a long press by two seconds, configure, choose the correct device type. It's going to go ahead and go through the setup process. And we just need to confirm and lock it in, make sure it picks up everything and understands our low rust settings as well. All right, so we got the device set up now and if we select it, we got overview, device log and settings. In settings, we can change the name. We can make sure the app key is correct. The device EUI is correct. Set our location the whole nine yards. Uh, obviously the map's gonna show up here on the left-hand side. So if you're screen capturing, make sure you're not giving away too much personal information. Don't dox yourself. Uh, but really cool that we get to monitor. We can see communications happening right now. We get the temperature right now of the area that the thermostat is in, as well as the humidity percentage, right? And here in, uh, you know, North Florida, it is very, very humid. But really cool to see this device in here. Uh, now, one thing I did notice is that because I didn't have this device already connected, I did get rejected as far as device registration goes. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I go to my gateway over here on the left-hand side, right, and I select my gateway and out of the list, you can see we're on the test net and it says continue registration. I did all that, but because I didn't have this uh, LoRa device connected, it rejected me, or at least that's the reason it gave me. So we just need to continue the registration and continue on through the process and everything, which I'm going to do off camera. But I just wanted to show you how easy it is to add a device to your Chirp wireless or gateway. Um, just go to devices tab, click add device, Laura devices, select the vendor and go through the steps. And it's just that easy. Good luck to you. And thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to jump in their discord and telegram. If you have any further questions, I am learning just as much as uh, you are. And let's just help one another out. Do me a favor on the way out though. Hit the like button, get subscribed, hit the notification bell to stay up to date. As well as check out links in the description, to help support the channel and what we do here. And I'll catch you next one. Take care.